your footprints to success are really footprints of success. Because every step that is made and taken based upon the goals that you have for your life and you're managing those goals correctly, every step is the progressive realization of success in your life. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other, as though everything is a miracle. If you really want to be transformed, you have to live an intentional life. This is so simple, I don't want you to miss it. Most people don't lead their life, they accept their life. And when you accept your life, you are living on things that are not worthy of your time and effort and energy. Dominant culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self and your belief in yourself. And, and you have to learn ways in which you can begin to connect with this power that you have within yourself to handle where you are. The key is to be constantly in a perpetual process of discovering the truth of who you are and fighting constantly to look for ways in which you can escape the inner conversation. Everything that you do is habit something. And that includes the snooze button. That includes sitting on the couch. That includes eating donuts. It's all habit forming. You know what else is habit forming? Discipline. Setting the alarm and getting up. Going and working out. Eating steak. That stuff is all habit forming too. I recommend you form some discipline habits. We can either accept conditions as they exist, or we can take the responsibility to change them. I don't want nothing to control me but me. And so I gotta put myself under extreme discipline to make sure I'm free. So when people see me, you get up at three, you don't drink, you don't smoke. I'm not doing that because I think I'm better than nobody else or I think you're gonna go to hell because you had a drink. I just want, I want to control, I want freedom. And for me, disciplining myself means more freedom. Jump this down. Also give yourself a chance to change. Some things I held on to that I thought this was it, this was it. I'm telling you, after a while I gave it up, found out it wasn't it. So give yourself a chance to change. Refine your philosophy. Refine your direction. If you'll give yourself a chance to do that, here's what will happen down the road a ways. A new door will open that you haven't discovered. Give yourself a chance to change. Reevaluate. So let your library be a testimony your dedicated interest in accelerated research. You will read whatever you have to read. You will hear whatever you must hear. And you will watch and see whatever you must see in order to make your life refined and worthwhile and achieve all of your purposes. It takes a lot of effort to learn. It takes a lot of effort to hear. It takes a lot of effort to decide and debate. But jot this down. It's all worth the price. Whatever stimulates you to think, whatever stimulates you to wonder, whatever stimulates you to react or even to debate, even if you hear something, you say, well, that's not right. See, that's still valuable. It means you're awake. It means you're alert. It means you're alive. It means your mind is ready to take on something, whether it's agreeable or not agreeable, something right, something wrong. Who cares what it is? We've got to listen to a variety of voices. And some are going to come from the left and some are going to come from the right. Some are going to come from mysterious sources. And some will try to entice you with all kinds of stuff, but that's okay. Just so you're alive and alert and awake, ready to process anything that comes your way. Take the best of it and make it beneficial. So that tomorrow you walk in a stronger step. Next month you see a clearer vision. And a month from now, the purpose for your life is multiplied by two, three, five. That's what I want to create. Here's one that's important as you read and as you listen and as you study and as you grow and as you take notes and as you fill up your journal. An 
try to work on the ideas to make yourself valuable in the marketplace. Here's something to remember on your personal development, some things I had to learn. First, steps to success. First of all, you need good ideas. Just decide right now you're going to accelerate your plan for collecting good ideas. Ideas for your life, ideas for your health, ideas for your marriage, your relationships. Ideas that stimulate. One idea sometimes leads to the, leads to the next, leads to the next. And the four or five ideas in the future that really thrust acceleration into your life, you couldn't have gotten unless you went through the first one or the second. Learning to handle the passing of time. Jot this down if you're involved in business. You've got to give your project time. You've got to give your people time. Give people a chance to learn, chance to grow, chance to change. One of the great requirements, especially in such an industrialized, busy, mad, dashing society, and that is to have people patience. First, we exercise it with our children, our family. Getting people to work together, patience, even with your family. Involved with independent, it's a challenge. It's like herding cats, trying to get them to work. Herding sheep is easy; they very quickly get going in the same direction. But try herding cats. It's like the children, different ages, and different personalities, and different opinions. You get the family all going the same direction, kind of working together to make things work. You'll have some patience, you can do it. Now here's the big one, to have patience with yourself. Give yourself time to learn. Give yourself time to understand good ideas. Give yourself time to make changes and then grow into those changes. Give yourself time to refine your personality to fit the vision, whatever it is. Some you may have to speak up a little stronger. Some Learn to refine your personality and your temper. Suit. All of us can do that, but it takes it takes time. Is to take a brave look at your life. Look at your life right now where it is. So let me ask you some questions. As you begin to look out on the future, look out on this year, let's take personal inventory. What has brought you here? As you begin to look at the things that took place this past year, did you get out of it what you wanted? Did you achieve the goals that you set out to achieve? What part of your life or what things did you do that you don't want to be a part of your life? Are there any people as you begin to look at your life, look at where you want to go and what you want to do, are there any people that might be some dead weight that you need to think about unloading? Because what you have found through that relationship that it's more toxic than it is nourishing, it's more debilitating than it is empowering, and so now you've got to make a decision. See, many of us won't be able to move forward because we're not taking true inventory of our lives. As you begin to look at your emotional, your spiritual, and intellectual development, how many books did you read? How many seminars did you attend? How many classes did you take to begin to develop yourself professionally, to improve your craft or your skill? How many new things did you learn? Just take some personal inventory, just thinking, just thinking, just thinking. Beginning to know yourself. What are the things about your past that has influenced you right now? What's your philosophy of life? What are your beliefs, things that you feel very strongly about? What are some of the things that you have picked up along the way that you've been doing them for so long you think that they're you, that you need to begin to re-examine them and perhaps get them out of your life? See, a lot of things we're doing, we do unconsciously because we picked it up somewhere in life. A friend of mine out of Chicago named Rhea Steele, I was at her house to have dinner, and Rhea, who was born in Chicago, has a tremendous southern draw. After I met her mother, I said, where did Rhea get her southern draw from? She said, my sisters came up from Kentucky, and they used to be her babysitter. And she picked it up while in their presence. And Rhea still has that draw. What is it that you picked up somewhere in life that maybe be, might be a liability to you? What fear, what beliefs that you're holding on to tenaciously that no longer allow your life to work? It's not enabling you to produce the results that you want to produce in your life. And you're still clinging to them. See, as we go into a new world, there's some old behaviors that just won't fit. What are the 
events? What are the circumstances? What are the people that have shaped you? Just thinking, just thinking. What are the things that you need to let go? Some things that have cost you pain, that's stifling your growth and development. What are those things? As you begin to look at your profession or your career, what is it that you need to do to begin to upgrade your skills or your knowledge to continue for you to be competitive in the marketplace? As you begin to look at yourself and ask some of these questions, what is something that you're good at? Are you living your passion? Are you living your dream? What do you regard as your greatest personal achievement? What is the one thing that other people can do to make you most happy? Just think about these things. What would you do if you had one year to live and guaranteed success in anything you decided to do? What would that be? What would you do with your life if you had it to live over? Getting to know yourself. What is one value, one deep commitment from which you would never bulge?